tutorial will show you how to use the content and privacy restrictions under screen time in iOS 12. I'm going to assume that you have already turned on screen time and have a parental passcode. If you are unsure how to do that, you can consult our tutorial on turning on screen time. You can access the content and privacy settings either directly on your child's device or you can also use family sharing and access those settings on your child's device from your iPhone or your iPad. If you use family sharing, just remember that when you select screen time on your device that the initial settings you see are for your device and not for your child's. You will need to scroll down and select your child's name to access their screen time settings. So let's get started and see what you can do with content and privacy restrictions. From the home menu, select settings and then screen time. If you're on your child's device, you'll go ahead and select uh, content and privacy restrictions here. If you're using family sharing, scroll down to your child's name and then select content and privacy restrictions. Once you do that, you will be required to enter the passcode. Go ahead and enter the passcode. And now we can see all of the content and privacy restrictions options. You'll notice that these are all grayed out. That's because we need to first turn on content and privacy restrictions at the top. Toggle that on, it will turn green. And now we can make our adjustments. One of the first considerations for your child is how they will access the App Store. Under iTunes and App Store Purchases, you can turn off the App Store if you choose. That's the first option. Installing apps, if you hit Don't Allow, the App Store will not be available to them. You can also, of course, decide whether or not they can delete apps or whether they can make in-app purchases. The last option has to do with a password. If you make an initial purchase on the App Store within a certain time frame, you can make further purchases without having to enter the password again, and this would always require you to enter the password. Another option to you is to select which apps will be allowed among Apple's stock apps. When you select that screen, you'll just be given a long list of apps that you can decide whether or not you want your child to have access to those apps. And then here's the really big one, content restrictions. This is where you can select ratings for various kinds of media. So for example, if you don't want your child to have access to a pornographic podcast, then you can select clean as opposed to explicit on that setting. You can also make selections for movies, TV shows, books, apps, etc. Under web content, we have a few options. The first would be to limit adult websites. That obviously would keep your child off of websites that are identified as pornographic. The other option is to select allowed websites only. If you make this selection, then your child will only be able to access the websites that you specifically allow. So under add website, you can enter a URL and your child will be able to access that web website. If your child needs access to an additional website, they can always request it and you can enter the passcode and approve that website for them. If they are at school, you could give the passcode to their teacher and their teacher could enter that for them so that they would have access to the websites that they need. Limiting websites also initiates some other helpful functions. Your child will no longer be able to use private browsing, nor will they be able to erase their history. So that's really nice. Uh, whatever history there is will always be there. You can always go see what they have been uh, looking at. Now, it's important to note that these settings are primarily for Safari. And so if you download a third-party browser like Google Chrome or maybe Firefox, you can't necessarily expect that these settings will carry over. If you do download a third-party browser, many of them have uh, parental controls that you can access as well. Now, to finish up our content restriction section, you'll see that you also have some options related to Siri and Game Center. Uh, those are fairly self-explanatory, but the one that I might uh, point out is screen recording. Some parents are concerned that a child might be able to record something like a Snapchat that was sent to them that was maybe inappropriate. So if you don't want your child to be able to make a screen recording, you can turn that off here. Now returning to the main menu, we'll next look at privacy. You can see you have a host of options here. One of the important ones is location services. If you want to always be able to locate your child's device through family sharing, then you might consider selecting Don't Allow Changes at this point. You can also decide whether or not you want your child to be capable of sharing their location. You can turn that on and off here. 
And the other thing that you're given is just an, a notification of how the various apps that you have use location services. Most of those should be set to while using. If you have those set to always on, then that uses a lot of battery life. Uh, to turn those on and off, you'll have to go back into your uh, settings menu and select those apps themselves. Returning to the privacy menu, you can see you have many other options here. Most of these have to do with how certain apps will access either your calendars or your photos, uh, your microphone, etc. So you can uh, explore all of those. The last bank of options are pretty important. You can decide whether or not you want your child to be capable of changing the passcode to their device. If you don't want them to be able to change that so that you know it and you always have access to it, then under passcode changes, you can select don't allow. And another important setting is account changes. We talked about this in another short tutorial, but it, here, if you would like to turn off messages or FaceTime or something like that, then you can go to those apps and the way that you set them up will then be locked in place if under account changes, you select don't allow. One last important option for those of you who have uh, teenagers who are driving and who have iPhones, you might consider making sure that the do not disturb while driving is uh, activated, that it's allowed. Uh, that way when they drive, they'll not receive notifications and those who text them will get a notification back that they are driving. So that's a basic overview of what's happening on content and privacy restrictions under screen time on iOS 12.